Hey, greetings, Instagram family. I'm here with RJ again. Peace, family. And we're glad to be here with y'all. We're going to be uh, wrapping up the uh, chapter on relationships. I felt, I felt like that was a chapter that when one takes it to heart what, what was said during the course of me speaking about relationships, and you apply it, you will see a vast difference in yourself and your relationship. And I say that not just from hearing or seeing about it. I live it. You know, I mean, with me and her. I love the relationship that we have established because what it represents is a relationship that is generating power. It's generating substance. And it's a challenge. The relationship, I understand, is one of the greatest challenges that we have as human beings to be able to come, not the relationship with your brother, your sister, your mother, your family, but relationships with people who you have no idea where they come from. We came from two different worlds, yet our worlds came together to do what? Serve a purpose. That's what makes relationships powerful. Because when your relationship come together to serve a purpose, then the relationship get in view with power. And it may not look like it from the on start of it because you have two individuals who's trying to bring a unity between themselves, which is not always easy to do because it's not easy to do to get your own self to conform to the knowledge that you know you have and yet don't want to conform to it. So it's even more of a challenge when you're in a relationship because now it's not just you trying to get yourself to adjust to being the best individual you can be. You have to deal with them doing the same thing for themselves. And, and doing that, that can create a lot of clashes. I've been in those relationships where on the outside it looks all peachy keen and you hear, oh, y'all look so good together. Oh, y'all make such a good couple. But when the people ain't around, it ain't nothing like that. That's what I'm talking about. And that's what a lot of us live. And it's sad that we live in, in a society that promotes and condones such behavior. Because, in truth, when you're really trying to bring out the best in yourself, how would you not seek to bring out the best in those that are around you? Yet, you don't have any control over what the individual that's with you can going to do. All you can do is be the best of yourself. And in doing that, that gives them a choice to do the same. You don't have to make them do anything. You can't make anybody do anything anyway. Even when you believe that you can, you can't. So when you really come to grips with that. When you're in a relationship, you can't make them do anything, but that you have to make yourself become the individual that you really want them to be. Then you can start making change because everything else is just facade, man. Just like the world we live in. And relationships ain't no different. Yet, relationships are designed to be an expression of the universe itself. That's why we have a universal union of power. I love, I love what I have come to understand of her because she's showing me her ability to transform herself and I'm watching the transformation. And with transformation inside of me as well because as she transformed, I also transform. And what are we transforming into? The highest expression of ourself. So when you say that, because that sounds real fantastic, right? But then what does that look like in everyday life? How... How does somebody, you know, apply that? How 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 do you know that there I'm gonna say is... I'm gonna tell y'all what it looks like. We lived we moved here from Baltimore. We got together. She came to live with me in Baltimore. When we got to Baltimore, we got busy. 
we transformed first our basin, then we transformed our yard. Yes. And in that transforming of our yard in our basement, it was transforming us at the same time. And yet, we didn't create that to affect the neighborhood around us. We created it so that we can grow our own food because she loves gardening and so do I. And we created the basement to have a space where we can go and chill. Yet, the community thought that what we had put there was a piece of heaven because it was. Why? Because in our coming together, she being who she is and me being who I am, we created. That was the energy we both a brought. A space. Right. Where people can come in a, in a society where, I mean, Baltimore is rough. When I tell you it's rough, it's rough. Yet, we was always at peace. We would sit out in our garden at 3 o'clock in the morning. All kind of stuff going on. We sitting right there. People ride by our way. Folks would come up and start dancing for us. I mean, we would have an absolute good time right there. How did that happen? It happened because we decided that we're going to be who we are in the midst of what we were living in. You don't have to be your environment. Let your environment be an expression of you. That's what relationship is all about. I've been in those relationships where you, you and your mate could have just got through arguing. Ah, 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 somebody knock at the door. Boop, 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 and y'all go to the door and they be like, hey, how are you? How y'all oh, coming? Come in. <laughs> Would you and like some tea? And, and, and to me, <laughs> that is insane because it should never be that in the first place. Yes, there's a time of two people coming together and gelling with one another. It's going to cause some rift. It is because you have two totally different environments coming together to create one environment. Now, this is the sister um, from the Nation of Islam. And I have to say, this is uh, Asan, the girl's auntie. So, Sister Sharifa has passed away, but her name is Sister Sharifa Muhammad. And her and her husband used to go around doing relationship tours. And she said, be in a relationship with someone who is not you. Just, it just it doesn't matter who, whether it's someone who is not you, and then making that cohesion, you know, because, you know, we have our things, our little, you know, it's just learning the person and get, you know, this person that's not you, and learning how to live with them in harmony. And the beginning of that is the harmony that you have with yourself. You cannot be all up and around and dysfunctional with yourself and bring harmony with someone else. Hey, that is very, very well spoken. Yeah. Because my desire is that we would become more conscious of what we're doing in the midst of the chaos that's going on around us. We can tell ourselves, oh yeah, I'm cool, it's cool. But at every hand, we popping off because of this happened, because of that happened, or because this one said this, or this one said that. When in reality, it all starts with us. So when you are in a relationship and you're seeking to be the best you can be, no matter how your mate might be acting, you have to still maintain the knowledge of you being who you said you want to be in the midst of that. And, and that, then, that I was just going to, I didn't mean to interrupt, that's the test. Because you can say it in theory, right, all day long, but it's when it's going down. Right. That you know, um, that's why I like those shows like Punk and there's a, there was a show right. called um, Snap. Right. Or, and mean, they would just do little things to people to see how long they could push this per person's button before they would explode. And if you could make it a certain amount of minutes, then you win money. Most of us, and I would, I'd be thinking, oh, I would have snapped in the first 10 seconds. Like, oh, you're not going to do that to me. You know, but then there were people who, like, flipped it on them. It was like, oh, well, wait a minute. Like, what's going on? That car up in flames. You know, what they think is their car up in flames. 
but able to be there and not be affected. Be you present. know, be able to be themselves in the midst of. You know, and I just have to say, and when we talk about relationships, that's hard to do because this is someone that you're close to and someone that you're, you know, emotionally oh, entangled man, with. All of the entanglement. You know, shout out to Jada Pinkett for bringing that word, all of the love that we come to know it for. I love the word entanglement now because <laughs> it means, I mean, really, it, it is an entanglement until you untangle yourself. But anyway, an entanglement. Yes. Yeah. So. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead, Asami. <laughs> hey, getting back to where we were. Hey, you know, that's what really helps me is how she view things different than I do. So that gives me a different view of everything. Not saying I have to see everything this way. No, she helps me see a different way. It's not that, oh, well, you let her influence the way you think. No, everything influences the way we think. Mm -hmm. And the one that's sitting next to you and living with you better be the one that's having the most influence on how you think because y'all are cohabitating together. You guys are on a journey together. You guys are an expression of the universe together. And all I'm saying is in a relationship, let that be something that when folks see it, they go, man, that's real. It's not just a facade. It's not just like you would see in Hollywood where, you know, oh, so-and-so got married. Don't mean nothing. They be at doggone uh, wife-swapping parties and all this. You, When you love yourself, you love the individual that's representing yourself, and why would you take them to some shit like that? To me, that's not a good representative of, of who we are as beings. We're talking about being human. And being human is all about being in relationships because we come here in a relationship with our mother and our father. And then we have relationships with our siblings. Mm -hmm. Then we have relationship with our friends. And that relationship begins to just expand itself. And then we learn how to have relationships with the trees and the plants around us, the animals, I mean, we, everything that we do is a relationship. So when we understand that we are in a relationship with this being we call Earth, then we act differently when it comes to it. When we understand that we're in a relationship with the animals around us, we treat them differently. When we disconnect ourselves from everything around us, everything is disconnected. Even the one that you call in your partner is disconnected for real. You know, the old saying that said, you don't know an individual until you have lived with them. Why is that saying uh, a reality? It's a reality because people can only sustain a mask for so long. They can only put the front up for so long. When you're living with them, it's difficult to keep that facade up 24-7, 365 days a week. That takes too much energy. So at some point, the mask got to come down and the real person comes out, which is not even the real person either. The person who they think they are comes out. Because the one that they present to you ain't the person that they think they are. The one that they think they are, the one when they when they reveal it to you, you'd be like, "Ha! Huh, what in the hell did I do?" It's always this retraction, like, "What? The, I thought no." See, that's what I'm saying. When you live with an individual, you're gonna see them for who they are. It's so much easier when you just take the mask off. Throw it down and just be yourself. Because what happens then? You don't have nothing to hide or nothing to uphold. Because why are you being who you are? And that's going to always be what you express. The easiest thing to me is to be who you are. The most difficult thing in the world is to pretend that you're something that you're not. Because it takes all that energy to uphold that. And the same thing in relationships. 
When two people are together and they're around other people and they friend, oh baby, I love you, you know. And I do, and then get in the car and be like, oh, I, I saw you looking at that nigga. Why was you looking at that nigga? What's wrong? Why? I mean, and it's this craziness. But everybody else looking and going, oh, they think it's such a good couple. Don't know the inner workings of nothing. When we go out to that ocean, we go on to the beach and we look out into that vastness. It is insurmountable vastness. Yet, we ain't seeing nothing but the surface. Because what's in that vastness is teeming with life that we don't see. Because all we're looking at is the surface. Same thing when we deal with one another. We look at the surface of ourselves and deal with just the surface of ourselves and dealing with the depths of ourselves because most people are afraid to go down into the depths of their own self so they can't share the depths of who they are with anybody else. You can't. How can you? When you haven't reached the depths yourself. But when you're going and seeking into the depths of yourself, what happens? When you connect with somebody, you're going to go into the depths of them and be able to see them quick for who they are. So, the old adage, be not unequally equally yoked, that's real. Because when you decide to bring all the energy, all of the being that you are, and connect that with another being, you better be doggone sure of that, that that being is a being that is sent for you to connect with because, and even if they're not, you're going to learn some valuable lessons, but I'm going to say this, you're going to go through hell. Straight up. So it's always our choice. We can wait for what life presents to us because of how we have lived our lives and presented ourselves or we can go out looking and when you go out looking you're going to find exactly what you're looking for you know why because you don't even really know what you're looking for why because when you find yourself you ain't looking for nothing it comes and looks for you you ain't got to go looking for love love lives in you and love draws love to itself so we ain't got to be out there searching because we searching in vain. That's why I am so content with my life right now and sharing my life with Aja because she's just the other, the more powerful representation of myself because women carry the energy. We, we here to support that energy for real. I mean, I know it's, a lot, it's hard for a lot of guys to get to that, but that's what we better be getting to because then your life becomes easy like mine. My life is easy, man. I enjoy my life. We go out and we work in the garden together. We got a thermal pool over there. We swim in our pool. We do everything together. And I don't tire. I don't be like, oh, man, I got to get away from her. I never feel that way. That's like saying I got to get away from myself. I love myself. So I love being around her. Hey, I've been to all the, all the other kind, and I'm going to tell you, they served me for the purpose that they needed to serve me in that moment. And this one that I'm in now is serving me for the joy of living. The other ones, I can say, was all lessons to get me to the point to where I was ready for this one. So, it's true. That is absolutely beautiful. Oh, sweet. <laughs> <laughs> hey, that's why I love I it because that's that. who we are. <laughs> so, hey, you know, well, wait, wait, how much time we got? A lot. Huh? It's so, 11. But we have a couple of people who yeah, joined, joined, who joined us and we want to greet you guys. I'm Asami. Yeah. Hi. And I'm Sharita. Sharita, pleasure. I'm Sharita. I'm Sharita's mother. Oh, it's a yeah. pleasure yes, to meet absolute you. Yes, pleasure. Amira. Amira. Amira, it's a pleasure. Yes, absolutely. You know, we always like to greet the family here at Usha yeah. because, you know, we here because of the family. You yeah. know, and those that decide to make this journey here are special to us because, I mean, it's not a piece of 
cake just to make it here. You have to go get passports and you have to get the money to get here. Get and over you yourself got, about you, you got to get past all country exactly. Stuff. <laughs> and, and you know, for a lot of folks who grew up in in the city, grew up in, you know, wherever you grew up, LA, New York, Chicago, Black America, Detroit. America. You used to how that too. environment presents itself. So to go and I'm going to another country and you've never been out of the country, that's a big ass leap. And just even if you have, just to be comfortable with it because right. all countries aren't created right. equal in the way we think about it. They're you not. know, so. And what I do know is that every time that you do make an effort to move into another totally different environment, that's another motion towards becoming more of yourself. Yeah. Why? Because you're allowing yourself to experience something that is totally unknown to you. Especially when the language is different, right? Because so, it forces you to communicate in a way you haven't been. There's certain things that are unknown, I mean, that are known, you know, amongst people. You'd be like, oh, like, oh, I'm in pain or something like that. But then you try to communicate an exact idea, you know, that's something... We appreciate Google and the others <laughs> that help us translate. But sometimes, you know, if the internet isn't available or something like that, and you got to go for it, like, hey, I'm trying to get here, help me. So it's right. always good to push yourself in these environments and, and be like, you know, man, I don't know the language, but I'm, I'm going anyway. Yes. I mean, you know, I, I, it really made please me that she was so willing to come because I wanted to get out of it states and so did she yeah. and this opportunity came for me to come back to I helped build this place right here so to come back after 20 something years come it felt home. good mm -hmm. you know and to bring and to have somebody who's with me who compliments me made it even better mm -hmm. so hey we've been loving our life yeah I love it here I really do and that's what relationship is all about yeah. us touching everything around us in a way that elevates the energy and not in a way that brings confusion and doubt. We have enough of that given to us. Mm -hmm. We have to see an example of love and power. Those are the examples that affect us in ways that we can change this world. We think of the world as being so huge or so ginormous, but in reality, the world is a small place compared to the unknown because the unknown is where everything else rests. We live in the known, which is very small. And the smaller you make your known, the smaller it becomes. The more you expand your known and seek out the unknown, the greater your expansion becomes. Because we are part of the universe, so why limit yourself? Hey, that's in everything. That's in your doing your job, whatever that is, to the point, you know, when I was working, I would always think to myself that, man, this is not something I can keep doing for the rest of my life and retire from this. I could not, it was hard for me to digest it, to know that I'm working for uh, individuals who's making this shitload of money and just sprinkling it out and have those who the, what they consider their employees at each other's throats behind this one making a few dollars more than this one. And yet, again, those agreements that we make, we have to be conscious of. When you go to a job, don't just accept what they say they're going to pay you if you expect more. And if that's not the job that you get, so what? Keep looking. We have to change how we view ourselves. You're an asset to wherever you go. Or they wouldn't be hiring you. But that's only really that that statement is for people who really don't understand their value and what they bring to the table. Because when you understand your value, you don't compromise and you don't like you stand and what oh you would be I would be an asset to this company. You want to have me here. And this is what I require. You look at it differently than saying, oh, could you please give me a job? That's where the, 
you know, the transition in the interview or whatever goes on where, you know, you can see, you know, almost like a, you know, a tug of war match. You can see the weight of the, you know, about who, who feels like they are in a better position. And then that's how you present yourself. So that statement is for people who still don't understand who they are and what they bring to the table. And that's what I want to say. That's what I'm getting ready to say right now. Every one of us come in here the same way. Through a womb and naked. So I don't care who you are, what position you have, what title they have given you. You ain't no different than nobody else. The difference that you are is how you express yourself to individuals as you come into contact with them. Are you leaving something that's beneficial or are you leaving with trying to steal whatever energy they have? Because that's what a lot of folks do when they want you to praise them. They want you to acknowledge them. They want to talk to you like as if you below them. Ain't nobody below nobody. We are just no better than these ants that's running around here, all these doggone iguanas that we see running around here. We ain't no better than them. We are here living life. You ask the iguana, why are you here? You know, we like to eat your fruit. To live. Why are we here? To eat the fruit and live. We got to come back to basics and live our lives in a way that makes us at peace inside because when you get to that point disease no longer exists there because you are at ease how can disease exist where you are at ease you are not in no discomfort why because you know everything that comes is a challenge for you to overcome I don't care what it is Nothing have come here to overcome you. You have come here to overcome everything. And when we understand that, then we approach all these things that we call our challenges, our disease, whatever in the hell it is, in a different light. We see ourselves as being the conquerors, not us being conquered by anything. She'll tell you, I don't go to no doctors, hospitals, I don't get sick, I don't even know what that is, sick. I'm at ease. I love the peace that I feel that we're able to bring because of our journey. Simple as that. Because for me, I've been studying how to deal with the unknown, how to go into the spirit realm since I was 18. And the biggest challenge in any path of enlightenment is joining with someone else and trying to uh, accomplish that. Because you that may be the thrust of your goal, your life, yet you come into a relationship and that's not the thrust of theirs and then you have to make these adjustments. And a lot of times those adjustments is not beneficial to you or the individual you're adjusting for. Because the adjustments that most folks want you to make are and coinciding with the reality that they've been living in. And when you come from a place of understanding how that reality has been given to us, and that's not one that we created, therein is the challenge. So, in finding and allowing yourself to be open enough and work on yourself enough that the Spirit brings somebody else into your life who's able to assist you in that journey, I consider that to be a true gift from the earth. Brothers, learn how to treat your gifts. For real. You know what I know. You would do it. Cause, hey, I done been, I done been you. I'm sure it have been you and some. I ain't just jumped out and jumped out of the jungle. I was living in L.A., in the, in the streets. I know the streets. Then been to prison. I done did all that. I done did all that craziness. And yet here I am. Sitting under this. Palapa. Palapa. Feeling the. Cool Caribbean breeze. And loving the hell out of my life. And loving the hell out of Aja right here. 
Why? Because I love myself enough that I can share that love with somebody else. That's all we're here to do. Mm-hmm. And when you do that, you ain't got to go out on the hunt. Trust me, you can quit hunting. I'm trying to give you a tool to help you to come into the reality of the kind of relationship you want to have. Instead of going out finding somebody, oh, he looks good. He got, Oh, he got a good job. Oh, girl, he got a nice car. And he's a damn monster. But you didn't know that. You, because you didn't see him. You saw what he had. Because if you had to take the time to look at him, you would have saw him. But because you don't take the time to look at yourself, you can't see nobody. It starts with us. We have to see us. And once our ancestors said, know thine own self and all else will be revealed unto you. So, when you start to know yourself, you don't have to be afraid of what you're going to encounter out there because you're already prepared for whatever you're going to encounter out there. I'm, I think I made that pretty simple. You don't have to prepare because you are prepared for whatever comes to you from outside. You are well equipped. And trust me, I would take it further, but I don't want you guys to go, nah, what, what is he saying? So I'm going to leave it just like that. Because we all have a lot of growing to do. And we can't all devour all that inf- too much information. That's just like trying to eat too much food. You can only eat so much, and you got to let some of it out. Same. You got to digest it. You got to digest it and <laughs> eliminate it. The waste. <laughs> so, life is the same way all the way through. When we understand that simplicity, we can start enjoying one another. Man, we are, we're supposed to be loving and enjoying this earth that we live in, not struggling, feeling hospitals busted, going laying, breathing apparatuses all up our butts. <sighs> <laughs> and want everybody to feel sorry for us. Why? Because you did that to yourself? Because you didn't want to control your own behavior? Stop it. I don't I don't feel sorry for nobody because I don't have no reason to feel sorry for myself. I expect us to be the human beings that we come here to be. To express the highest vibrational frequency that we are able to express in that moment because we're seeking to express something higher. So, with that, do, do you guys I'm have, open to that. Yeah, do you guys have any questions or if you want to make comments. a statement? Yeah, comments, anything? Yeah, something I, sparked. Yeah, it was really interesting about what you said. We are the love, and we the love we already have is already drawn to us. That was something that stood out, and I love the way that you have a you honor each other. You know, you're complimenting you know each other just by being you're just hearing a beautiful black couple celebrating the connection that's Thank you. special i really appreciate that well hallelujah <laughs> <laughs> no yeah no thank you because yeah like he said it's work it's and work. yeah and it's really work it's not it's, it's like the work on the relationship kind of takes care of itself it's the work on We're doing yourself ourselves. I mean, it's the continual growing of yourself that just makes it better and better. That's real. Yeah. Where did you, Asha, where did you grow up? Did you grow up in Baltimore? Or Jersey. Jersey. Okay. I'm from, I'm from New Jersey. Jersey. You from Jersey? North. North. Okay. I'm from Plainfield. I was born in Plainfield. So it's oh. right up the road yeah. from, or right down the road from, um, from Newark. So yeah, what's up? Hey. <laughs> we don't pump gas in New Jersey. Like every state should adopt that. Yeah. I don't understand what's going on in the other states, but we don't have to get out the car to get gasoline. No. <laughs> I love that about New Jersey. Um, but I grew up in New Jersey, but I left New Jersey when I was twenty two. And then I moved to Atlanta. I lived in Michigan for a while. And I moved back to um, Georgia for a while. Then I went to D.C., Maryland. Yeah. Okay. Well, I've been, I've, yeah, I've moved around a little bit uh, intentionally. Not out of distress or just like, oh, I'm about to go do this. And, yeah, I, 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 I have six children, two sets of twins. Wow. This is one of them. She's a twin. <laughs> okay. Yeah. 
I've I've done like just a little bit of living. Just a little yeah. bit. I definitely You've done did. a lot of living there. <laughs> <laughs> no, because I plan on doing bit. a whole lot more, and I'm so I'm it, like it really is an uh, a, a pleasure to meet someone who, you know, is willing to to move around, and I've been like, oh, like you have to undo all of these things, you know, that they're used to. Like he came already packaged like that. I'm like, good, well, let's go, and uh, you know, so we we've been on the move and doing things and and growing, and again. Working on ourselves, you know. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. And there was something else you said about how don't go into an environment adapting to the environment. You change the environment. Yes, we do. We do change it. You can, you know, it when you walk into a room, sometimes yeah. it could be all kind of craziness going on in the room. And you come in there after you and just had this good feeling about yourself and looked in the mirror and go. And I feel good. And you go in that room, and when you walk in, everybody stop and look at you. We be like, why everybody looking at me? It's because of the energy that you're generating when you walk in that yes. room. Yes. People recognize that they feel it. We feel. We think that we disconnected. We are connected. Yes. And you feel it in the opposite too. Just from you don't even have to go in the room. It could be a phone call. Let one of your, you know, someone you care about call you up in distress. Oh, this just happened, and so and so, and it could be total nonsense. But just the fact that they're feeling the way they're feeling, and we'll resonate with it, and then, you know, we'll hang up the phone and not understand why, you know, we've been brought down. Well, you just listen to a whole tragic story that you know, and someone you care about is not feeling well right now. So we we take that. This when you know you if if you being present. You can go, all right, well, good, everybody's safe, you know, no one died, or whatever the situation may be, and kind of help them and move it back up. But a lot of times, we're a victim to all of the energy vampires out there. But a lot of times, we don't even know that someone came and stole our debt, and now we in the funk for the rest of the day. But we encountered this mug earlier. We was good at first. We have to be able to know, like, oh, okay, I'm going to leave with the same energy I came or better. You can't let people drain you from a phone call or from a visit to your home. Like, can you imagine? You open up the door, somebody knocks on the door, you open up and let them in, and then you leave, they, you leave, they leave and you're drained? That's not, no. That's why I used to love Martin when he used to kick people out. <laughs> <laughs> Get this bad get this, get out of here with that. So, in concluding our relationship portion of this chap, this chapter, hey, I greet all of you. I wish all of you to have the most beautiful relationships you yeah. can create, so that we can look like a bouquet of flowers down here on this earth. So when the, when when they look down here, they go, man, the earth has changed. <laughs> I mean, for real, because it is us who changed the earth because we part of her. And as we blossom, she blossoms. So, family, love y'all. We're going to be coming back. I don't know what the next chapter I'm going to give y'all, but know that next Thursday is going to be something different. All right? Love y'all. Peace. I always do my Instagram posts.